Welcome to the Jeremy Makes Things Acme Threadapalooza Single Point Extravaganza. I am back working on my little baby surface grinder, trying to get the vertical adjustment sorted out, get this thing put back together so I can use it. I've got this mocked up for right now just so I can show you what's going on. We've got a guard here, and that covers up the gears and the screw for the vertical adjustment. I don't have a roll pin in here right now, so this bevel gear is just free floating. But basically all of this, except for this bevel gear, are kind of worn out. The nut is actually tapped into this gear, and both the screw and the nut are really badly worn. If you look, you can even see how much wear there is on this screw. I think that this thing just never got taken off and oiled. The shaft that runs from the hand wheel to this little bevel gear is really badly worn. You can see scoring on that. I went ahead and remade that shaft already because it's just a straight shaft with some threads on it. I made that out of an old bolt. There's a couple threads there, but they'll sit up inside the hand wheel where it doesn't matter. I think the next piece of this I want to tackle is this screw, single point that, and then thread the nut to fit it. If you weren't expecting the scrap metal to make an appearance, I just want to say welcome to my channel. This is actually an old axle. I used the other half of it in my rotary table build, and I know it's a pretty decent alloy, fairly hard, so I think it's going to work well for this. Well, the rust cleaned up on that, but the cut is just super chattery and terrible. Still have a good ways to go, so I'm going to shorten this up and see if that helps clean it up a little bit. This carbide tool is cutting a lot better. Looks nice. I spent a lot longer than I would have liked to grinding and stoning, checking this thing with this Acme screw thread guide but I think it's to the point where it's not gonna get a whole lot better than it is. This is something that would be really nice to do on the surface grinder with a high degree of precision, but I think you can see the problem with that right now. It's kind of ugly through here because I kind of hacked some out, so I didn't have as much to cut back to get the point down to where I needed it, but that part doesn't cut anyway. All of this is going to get cut away when I do the small thread on the end anyway, so I'm going to give myself a nice generous gutter to run these threads into. That looks like 10 to me. I don't have a 3 8 fine thread die, so I'm just going to single point these threads. In. And since this is a pretty shallow thread, I'm not going to bother swinging the compound over. I'm just going to do it straight in with the cross slide. Overall, that's a pretty imperfect Acme thread, but it's a heck of a lot better than this one. It might not be as good of one as I could buy from McMaster Car, but this channel isn't called Jeremy Buys Things from McMaster Car. I do enough of that anyway. I did miss on the threading dial a couple times, so there's a couple threads at the end that are kind of messed up, but I think those are kind of extras anyway. I don't know that they ever really get used. And if they do, it's sort of where I would be using a really small grinding wheel all the way down on the base without the mag chucks. I'm probably never even going to use those threads. I'm just going to leave them for now. If I have to, I'll go back and redo this, but it's a lot better than it was. I think that's going to be pretty good. Moving on to the bevel gear, you can see the threads are tapped down in there, but there's also wear between the bevel gear and 
this little housing that it rides in. You can hear it waggle around there. I have a new gear to fit in there, but it doesn't fit in there, so I need to figure out how much wear there is on here and if it's still round and if I need to clean that up. And then I need to figure out if I can fit this down in there or if it's going to be too small once I clean that up and I need to go back and sleeve this. So I checked this both directions and did a couple on the diagonal just to confirm. It's all within about a thousandth. I had a couple outliers, but that seems pretty good. I also want to check. There's a little ridge here where it's not worn. I'm just curious how much wear there actually is on this. It's actually only about two thousandths wear on this. I figured there would have been more wear on this cast iron part than on the steel gear. It's obviously loose. I'm kind of wondering how much of that is just play that's built in so that it doesn't bind up. I'm going to go for a good running fit on this and hopefully that works out and doesn't come back to bite me and bind up, but if it does, I'll just come back and open it up a little open up the fit a little bit more. Got a half inch mandrel here. I'm just going to super glue this on. I feel like I've been doing a lot of turning between centers lately. I'm kind of starting to enjoy it. At this point it shouldn't fit, but I'm gonna, just going to check to make sure that it doesn't. Yeah, it's super close, but not quite there. That should be maybe a thousandth or maybe half a thousandth large. I'm going to champ for this real quick and then just polish it with some emery to the final size. Spot on an inch 130 and I did go ahead and polish this up too since this is a bearing surface riding on there. That should be a nice running fit right there. The next thing I want to do is thread the inside of this and to do that I need an internal threading tool. I had considered grinding one out of a solid tool bit but honestly, that's a lot of grinding. And even grinding this was a pain in the butt to get it right. Now, in preparation for doing this, I went back and re-watched this old Tony's Acme threading video for the fifth time. In his video, he ultimately built one up out of a couple of pieces, but he also mentioned making one out of a piece of tool steel and heat treating it, which reminded me, when I got the surface grinder, I also got a heat treat oven. So I'm going to go ahead and make one out of this piece of 01 tool steel. Now I could spend the next 15 minutes explaining to you how I'm going to do this and then show you, but just follow along. I think you're going to like how I do this. So this is going to need to fit through the minor diameter of the hole. So to find the minor diameter, I'm starting with the full diameter, subtracting off twice the basic depth of thread. And then because I'm going to cut the thread off of one side of this, I'm adding back on the full depth of thread. The full depth of thread is 10 thousandths more because there's a clearance allowance on it. And then I'm just subtracting off an arbitrary number to give myself some room to work. I'm going with 30 thousandths on this. If that's clear as mud, just enjoy watching the chips fly. Now I want to have a half inch shank on this for the tool holder. A lot of people will say don't get a change gear lathe, get one with a gearbox. As a hobbyist for me, it's just part of the process. And sometimes it's about the process, not just getting to the result. I really only need part of one good formed thread on here, but I figured I'd leave myself some options. Before I start cutting this away, I just also wanted to note that 
Because this is a smaller diameter, it has a higher helix angle on it, so on the leading edge of these threads, there's already going to be clearance built in. I might need to hit it a little bit just to open it up, and I will need to take some material away on the back side of it because of that. So now I'm going to drop down to the wow. center line. Now I'm just knocking back all the rest of this thread to the clearance diameter. This would be an operation that would be really nice to do on my rotary table with a little tool maker's vise, but that'll probably be the first project I do with the surface grinder. That's starting to look like an internal threading tool. In theory, you could leave all of the teeth on here, but that's a lot of area to try to ram through at once. So I'm going to go ahead and just cut out all but the best one. I'm still using the threading tool on this, so I can just run right up against the tooth that I want to keep. I set my carriage stop so I know I won't cut into the tooth that I want to save. I'm just feeding in and feeling for that little burr there. When that is just about gone, I'm going to call it good. Well, things went sideways there, but I think I got it sorted out. What happened was, as I was parting this off, it bound up and bent the whole thing a little bit. I went back and checked, and the flat on this was actually a little too wide anyway. So that gave me enough wiggle room to true everything up. I came in straight on the back side of it and took it down to size. And that also gives me the relief I need on this side. So really all I need to do is kind of take a file and clean up some of this extra around here and get it ready for heat treating. Let's cook this thing. I tempered this thing at 375 in the oven, cleaned it up a little bit, stoned the important edges. Before I hardened it, I had scribbled on there with the Dremel uh, 10 TPI right hand. If I did something underneath here, that would be a subscribble. Putting it in a boring bar holder. I've got this in the four jaw chuck, trued up and bored out to size to start threading it. This is the most nerve-wracking threading I've ever done, and it is super close, but it's not quite there yet. So it's just a lot of really small cuts and spring pass after spring pass after spring pass. I tried to do this by the book, but I got off somewhere in the process because the numbers for the depth of thread really didn't line up with what the book says they should be. And it's kind of sloppy. Just kidding, that's the old one. The numbers are different from what the book says they should be for the thread depth in here, and it doesn't even fit on this old shaft. So I don't know quite where I went wrong, but it also says you make the nut and the screw to go together and keep them together as a pair. Really, this nut just needs to fit this screw. Very little play in that. So, I'm pretty happy with that. There is a little oil hole in here that comes down and actually comes in right on the corner here, so it oils both of these surfaces. And this is actually at a little bit of an angle, too, going out. This is definitely a weird thing to try to hold at this angle. It would be nice to go in with an end mill first, but I don't have one that's quite small enough. I should have filmed this. I just had the hole on the gear up on the drill bit. 
and just use that to land it in the vise at the right angle and in the right place. I'll get these tightened down and adjusted once I get the motor on, but the motor makes it really back heavy, so I'm going to save that for last. I think that having to take this cover off to oil this is a really poor design. So before I put this back together, I'm going to make a few more modifications to make this easier to oil. I drilled the shaft from the hand wheel through from both ends, but you need the obligatory long retract shot. Now I've got an oil passage through it, reamed it out, pressed a ball oiler in there. So now I can squirt oil the whole way through and oil the inside of the thing. I'm going to pop a couple holes in here to oil the bushings. All of these parts are held on with roll pins, which isn't going to work since that would block off that oil passage. So I'm going to put some set screws in the gear. This shaft collar already has a set screw in it. And then it turns out that I actually have the right size brooch and key seat cutter to put a keyway in for the hand wheel. It's hard to argue with that. go up and we'll zero. We're at zero on there. We're now zero there. Go back down. Let's go 50, 100, 150, 200. We're on zero. So we've got about 3,000 backlash. I'll take that. Well, I'm real happy with how this project came out. I still have a bit more work to do on this machine, get it bolted down, get the chuck ground in, but I'm going to spend some time getting to know it. But I can't leave off here without making a few sparks. And always, I just want to say, keep her well oiled. I wonder where these are supposed to go.